Let's talk about some male strain gene stealers and some incursions into the underhells with a look at Necromonda Hive Secundus and whether or not the new big box looks like a good deal. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today I thought I'd take a slightly closer look at the Necromonda big box that's coming out this weekend, do a quick overview of the contents of the Hive Secundus box set, with a look at the miniatures, prices and general idea, plus a look at how popular it is and a bit of feedback from you guys in a few polls. This big box set was revealed at Games Workshop's last preview, really quite a while ago at this point, and basically taking Necromonda in a new direction. They started with the base game, and then they had their Ash Waste expansion, and now I'm feeling quite an interesting and different twist. They've taken it to basically the twisted remnants of Hive Secundus, and made a fairly different version of the game, where basically you play as one gang trying to recover relics and artifacts, and the other player runs the Malstrain Gene Stealers and Brood Scum, and tries to destroy the Interlopers. Weirdly enough, with estimated prices, I've seen that some sources come out with very different numbers. I guess we'll know for sure tomorrow when it goes on sale around the world. But it looks like it's at least in the region of around $170, €140, Euros, or £105. Pounds. So basically a little bit more expensive than a Warhammer 40k Combat Patrol box set. I have seen some estimates being both a little bit higher and lower than those prices. I thought for this one we could take a quick look at the miniatures, and look at the general idea of the rulebook and whether or not you guys are thinking it's a good deal or not right now, as a summary of the box set. As ever, if you were looking to pick this one up, or any other Warhammer 40k type things, I do have a bunch of discount retailers links down in the video description, and they generally tend to save somewhere between 10 and 20% off Games Workshop's prices, so usually the way that I tend to go for pre-orders, as Element Games in the UK for 15% off, Wargame Portal in the USA for 15 as well, Gap Games in Australia for 21% off, and Fenris Workshop in Canada for 10% off. Here are the prices that the box set should be going live around the world. It should be on sale at midnight central time at Wargame Portal in the USA. It's midnight eastern time over in Fenris in Canada. 10am in the UK and then midday Australian eastern time over at Gap Games. I'm really not too sure whether or not there's going to be a big run of demand on this one. Games Workshop really does seem to be two ways about box sets these days. I feel like it's the sort of one that if you are absolutely committed to getting it, it's probably worth being early, just in case they pull a kill team launch on us, and they wind up being little to no allocation to discount retailers. Fingers crossed that like the Skaven Tide box set though, they'll produce enough, and anyone who wants one will be able to pick one up. In any case, a big thank you to any of you folks who are ordering through the links in the video description, it does help support the channel and keep the videos coming. In any case, taking a quick look through the miniatures, First up, these are the guys who are doing the incursions into the Underhells. The core of the gang are the Vansar Tech Hunters. They're basically trying to acquire important data, new technology, and anything that can further the prospects of their gang, and equipped with a whole bunch of fancy weapons with which to do so. They're typically joined by an Aura Spire Hunter in-game. There's two different ones in the box set, and these guys are basically nobles of House Helmore almost sort of questing knights in their own weird way. Their main agenda is to slay some horrors of the Underhives, destroy a whole bunch of Malstrain gene stealers and their spawn, and reap a big kill tally in their fancy exo-armoured suits. Trying to bring down the gang on its journey are the Malstrain gene stealers. These are basically the mutated and twisted radiation-infused gene stealers after the hive was destroyed, the Patriarch getting a whole load of genetic damage and producing these particularly freaky spawn just in case the regular gene stealers weren't quite alien and dangerous enough for you. I feel like the miniatures for them are pretty interesting and thoroughly disturbing, and they come with the little floating brain crab type things that are the tyramites, plus a whole bunch of brood scum, which are essentially the hive scum models, but with some gene stealer cult heads attached onto them. In general, it seems that people are slightly more hyped for the mouse strains than they are for the bansar and the spiras, though both of them definitely have a fair bit of interest, I must admit I did feel like the mouse trains were the more interesting side of the box for me, and it has been interesting to see the bunch of four twelve miniatures they've been revealing on those Monday previews, things like that warped psyker, or the curious gene stealer created tech priest thing. Overall it adds up to 11 protagonist models, and 18 antagonist models, of course depending on your point of view. Then also in the box set is the rule book, a 176 page softback rule book, kind of similar to the one that they had in the Ash Waste sort of box, 
kind of an interesting system this one in a two player campaign where basically you have the one player doing the actual incursion force mounting an expedition into Hive Secundus and playing missions against the Malstrains that guard it. It almost feels like a bit of a dungeon crawler type thing and perhaps not so very dissimilar for the idea of Space Hulk. That one definitely feels like it does have some parallels with it. Close confines and gene stealers rushing out at you to try and claw apart your guys. The game is played on the double sided game board which basically has a map of a whole bunch of hive walls and narrow confined corridors and then you have it set up with a bunch of bulkhead door plastic terrain pieces and things. I guess they can be used to create different maps and things, maybe places for your soldiers to breach perhaps. The general idea for the campaign system is that the person taking command of the incursion gang will basically fight their way through six missions. Basically three sets of two missions, one called the Under Hell's Entry Phase as they break their way into Hive Secundus, a bit of downtime to unlock upgrades and things and promote their warriors. Then an Exploration Phase with some sort of mid-tier missions against an increased threat, one more downtime, then a sort of end-game confrontation phase, venturing into the very heart of the Patriarch's Lair and basically facing the strongest threats that the Malstrains have to throw at them. Apparently the idea is that if your warriors fall in battle, then it will be basically permadeath on the sides of the incursion party, so quite high stakes. You need to absolutely make sure that you're achieving the earlier missions while being very careful with their lives, as you might really need them for the final battle. Each of the missions will have some tweaked rules. Apparently the territories can confirm Malstrain points to allow the Malstrain player to add extra models to their army. Extra brood scum and gene stealers, plus various rewards to level up your gangs as they progress through the campaign. Overall, I must admit it does seem kind of fun. A fairly self-contained little gaming system. Obviously at this point, the entire campaign thing hasn't really been revealed in full. I'm sure it won't be too long before content creators start posting their reviews of it. For how good a deal the box set looks like, I feel like it is good that it's starting out at a much lower price than, say, that Necromonda Ash Waste box set. Regardless of whether it's $180 or $170 or something, that's certainly far less than around about $300 that the Ash Waste one was. That one did come with a few more miniatures and quite a massive amount more terrain, which I guess inflated the price of it. Just doing some very rough estimates for prices, going by things that Games Workshop already have on sale. If you take the Brood Scum to be Hive Scum, then they're worth around $41. I've estimated the Malstrain Gene Stealers and Tyramites, plus the Tech Hunters, to both be sort of equivalent to the Ironhead Prospector squad team. They've got 8 models in, so it kind of felt appropriate for that. I've added on $52 each for them. The Aura Spire Hunters are based on the Jotun Servo Ogrins, so maybe $47 for that. And the rulebook may be a little bit tricky to place given that it's a softback one. Maybe something like $52 based on that Book of the Outlands type one, though it is a slightly different offering. Plus you get all the bits of terrain, game boards and dice and things. They'll probably see those more as extras than the core offering. If it was just literally the miniatures that you were interested in and nothing else, it looks like it adds up to around about $190 of theoretical value for the miniatures. So if you're looking at it at a discount set for them, then it will be kind of small. So I'd say it's probably not going to look like a super great discount as Games Workshop's concerned if you just want the miniatures and literally nothing else. For the overall offering though, it certainly feels like there maybe is a bit more interesting gameplay versus just any one 40k combat patrol for example. Quite fun to have an own self-contained game all in a box. Could be an easy way to dip a toe in a bit of Necromonda if you fancied it. I was kind of interested in how popular it would be in maybe sort of the general Games Workshop following population that watched the channel. Obviously people are going to be slanted massively towards 40k collecting for people who watch me. For this one I tried to do the poll a little bit differently, so basically asking for a poll of questions and concealing the fact that the main target was Necromunda, as that would give us a rough idea as to how much of the 40k population is interested in the box set. It seems that from this answer it's around about 8% or so, probably not too far away from what I might have guessed there. Necromunda does have a following, though it's not literally something that everyone does. For arbitrary out of 5 score value, you guys chose to rate it about 3 out of 5. And that's, again, it has to be taken in context. It does seem to be kind of middle of the road for similar sort of out of five scores that I've done for previous Battle Force box sets and combat patrols. Neither one of the absolute best box sets that Games Workshop have made, but neither one of the worst. For popularity, though, I was interested in just how this one stacked up against the various Battle Force box sets that people might have bought over the year, just as another way to gauge a bit of popularity. Basically, I asked everyone which of the 40k Battle Force box sets they wound up picking up, 
on whether or not they were intending to buy Necromunda and the Horus Heresy Mechanicum battle group. At least Foreign stated intent to buy it looks like both of those beat out all of the 40k box sets. It does make me wonder if people are maybe being a bit more interested, but perhaps not everyone would follow through on that. But certainly it seems like it's got some fairly good demand from this. If those numbers were in any way accurate, then there'd be as many people interested in this as there were things like the Deathwing box set or the Crew launch box set, both of which did sell pretty well and had good availability. I sort of wonder for some of the other Battle Force box sets, particularly for the Chaos Space Marine ones, whether the numbers are just kind of low because nobody could find any of them. Certainly that Veterans of the Long War box set got sold out very, very quickly. Overall, looks like there are at least a fair few people hyped for this one. Kind of nice to see a sort of starter box set that isn't priced absolutely sky high like the Ash Waves one. Finally for the Necromunda release, there's a bunch of stuff coming out alongside it. There's a Hive Data Stack cluster as a little plastic terrain piece that you can have on the board when you're playing, and a Ruins Zone Mortalis that could also be used to add a bit of theme to that game board for this. The rulebook's available completely separately as well, and there's one of their Forge World releases in the Proxy and the Fixer. Some mercenaries to add to some gangs. I guess the other Forge World bits, like that Mouse Train Coalescence, the Mouse Train Alpha, and the Mouse Train Possessed Tech Priest type guy, they'll all be following on at a later date. Probably their rules in this Book of Desolation book that's supposed to be following up the whole release. That one's going to be some expanded rules for the Hive Secundus Incursion type gangs, more focused gang related content for the other players that might want to be delving into the Underhells. In any case, look forward to hearing what you think of the new Necromunda release. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Would you be tempted to pick this one up or not? Is Necromunda a setting that you've had any big interest in? As mentioned, if you were looking to pick it up, the links down in the video description can save a little bit of money as well as supporting the channel. Pre-orders should be going live at midnight in the USA and Canada, midday in Australia and 10am in the UK. In any case, feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics if you'd like to keep up with Games Workshop's news and releases. I do tend to post new videos just about every day. And finally, if you would like to help support the channel a bit more directly, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep all of these coming. Channel patrons do get a few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, an automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening and I'll hope to see you guys next time.